Good afternoon, hockey fans, and welcome to another BG ACHA matchup. We saw one last night. Tonight, the Bowling Green Falcons play the Xavier Musketeers in the first game of a two-game home-and-home series. Last night, we saw an absolute wonderf wonderful matchup of the Battle of I-75 oh, ACHA yeah. version. Mm -hmm. uh, Bowling Green won 6-5 to five in that one. Justin, what did you like to see out of that game? Well, I mean, like, BG, they were up big. They were up. 5-2, about five, six minutes into the third. And uh, Toledo, they're a great team. We know they're in Division One. They have a lot of great players. We saw a lot of guys taking over that game last night, especially in the uh, first period and also in the third. And, I mean, they gave up the lead, up 5-2. Then it was tied 5-5 with, with 3.52 left to go. And, obviously, like, you would think a team would feel discouraged giving up a three-goal lead, all three goals in the third period. They came right back 37 sec uh, seconds later, and they scored Cole Ferry, uh, or, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mikey Papuanu scored the uh, go-ahead goal. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was no quit, answering back, not getting uh, discouraged after giving up a lead. Uh, I, I love seeing that from this team. They, they've been doing it all year so far. And, uh, yeah, I'm feeling last night it's going to give them a lot of confidence heading into this game here tonight. Yeah, last night was magic for Bowling Green, as we just said. Uh, and I found out last night after the game, first time in 12 years that the Bowling Green ACHA team beat Toledo. You absolutely love to see that. Yep. The, rec the streak's broken. Monkey's off the back. Bowling Green ACHA hockey can play this one with no worries about that because we got a brand new game. It's 0-0 in this one, obviously, st starting out yet. Bowling Green just took the ice. Stands are getting packed once again. I mean, you love to see the love for hockey. Last time, we, if you didn't tune in, we saw a packed Toledo Ice House tonight oh, yeah. the Slater Family Ice Arena once again filling up like we've seen so far this season. I will talk about something about last night. was well, the same as uh, tonight. Jack Smalley in the net made his Bowling Green debut in a huge yep. rivalry game that, you know, you get so much pressure on you. Yes, he gave up five goals, but he also saved almost 40 shots last night. 37 saves on 42 shots. Unbelievable Man was standing on Unreal. his head. And one of the, you know, he had a, a cough up in one of those goals. We will say that. But we'll, we'll keep up and see what happens in this one. Jack Smalley making his second start for the Bowling Green Falcons in his ACHA career. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, for him, like, when the Falcons got the lead back up 6-5 with three minutes left, he had to make some really stellar saves. I mean, it's very, like, I keep, I keep on saying the same word, but, I mean, it's I can't think of a different word to use. Very discouraging for him because I mean giving up three goals and they weren't his fault coming yeah. back, most of them weren't his fault and, but I mean he made some in incredible saves in the last uh, few minutes and to uh, keep your head up and, and come through for your team in the last few minutes was huge it was r very very impressive to see uh, what he did in his debut and I'm looking for another big performance from him here tonight and for this matchup last year Bowling Green did split with the Musketeers of Xavier uh, you know lost the one at home and won the one on the road. It was a split home and home. The visiting team won both games. Yep. Justin, what do you want to see from Bowling Green tonight? Obviously a very different team than last year we mentioned all season. Well, I mean, I know they were very, very unhappy with the way the game went last year. I believe that they lost that game 6-4. to four. And, I mean, they're going to be uh, looking to win the game here tonight. It's like you said, they split uh, the series uh, last year against Avery. They knew they could have won both games. I think there's a lot of confidence heading in. Uh, to uh, tonight's game, uh, I'm looking for a big for a big performance here from every single line and every single pairing, and also in the net from uh, Jack Smalley. Yeah, last night, as we wrap up this Dirty Birds pregame show, last night we saw a big first line show up once again. It's oh, kind yeah. of been silenced the past couple of weeks with uh, who shows up and uh, a bunch of personal stuff not having them play together. But two goals for Cole Ferry, I believe two goals for Mikey Papawanu, Mikey. and a goal and. I think a handful of assists for Chase Denall. You yep. love to see that. That what Bowling Green relies on. A lot of power comes from that line. But as we say that, we've said it all season. This any line can score for this team. We saw it last night. First line getting off with uh, Denall passing it straight to Nitschke. He getting a beautiful deflection into the back of the net right there to get the second goal for the Bowling Green Falcons. So yes, that first line is very very powerful. But any any line can do it. Justin, final takeaways before we end this 31st pregame show. Um, all game, uh, just keep playing your game all game because we know when this Falcon team, when they're able to play th 
their game and control the offense and defense and the, and the pace of the game. They're a very, very hard team to stop. We saw it uh, last night, late in the second, those last few minutes, they were in full control. Toledo, they had a bit of a, of a breakdown, not really sure what happened, and, and Fiji put two in the back of the net in the last couple minutes. So yeah, play your game, control the pace, and it, it's gonna be a good one here tonight, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. Like uh, last night, I will say one last stat before I wrap this thing up, before we wrap this thing up. Bowling Green gets their first win by not scoring first last night. I think that's a huge momentum boost. We've seen yeah. it all season. They're four and five now, I believe. And, four and five. Uh, three of those four before last night was all three wins they scored first. Tonight we'll see what happens. Bowling Green can now win on any, any opportunity they're at, down or up. But this has been a Dirty Birds pregame show. I'm Ben Shanahan, my partner Justin Chicotano. We thank you for tuning in early to the pregame show, and we are right around the corner from this matchup, about five and a half minutes left. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.
Good evening, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to this ACHA Division II matchup between the Xavier Musketeers and the Bowling Green Falcons. I am Dustin Chicatano, alongside my broadcast partner, Ben Shanahan. So tonight, uh, BG plays their second game in two days. Last night, they got the win 6-5 to five against Toledo in the Battle of I-75, a big, big win. As uh, Ben mentioned in the pregame, first time they beat the Rockets in 12 years. So a huge win last night and certainly going to be a big momentum shift. A big momentum shift into here tonight. They're going to take that momentum from that win last night and hopefully carry it into this game here tonight at the slate. Uh, ben, what are your keys for the game here tonight for the Falcons? Got to trust your goal. We saw a lot from Jack Smalley last night. Um, There's a few shot, few times that it just seemed like he had a you know a freshman mistake or two. He played absolutely phenomenal last night, though I will say, you got to play good defense. Um, but as as we say always, got to score first is the second takeaway. First, trust your goalie, trust your defense. Second, you got to score first. Got to stay aggressive. Got to play your game. Bowling Green plays best when they control the momentum. Yep. Third takeaway, I say it every time. Don't be stupid. Don't take penalties. Xavier is a is a decent team they're a decent squad we haven't seen them so far this season obviously playing them two games back-to-back -back days starting tonight you don't be stupid you don't get in the penalty box you can't you can't give them any advantages that they don't already have so for bowling green those are two takeaways justin how about you as we are about to have puck drop i mean i was i was going to say one takeaway and this is like it's the biggest thing that i can emphasize and it's what you just said stay out out of the box and one thing i was impressed with last night was their penalty kill BG and they scored a, a shorthanded goal late in the second period to, uh, to take the lead 3-2. And I mean, yeah, just stay out of the box. I know their kill, it's gotten better as the year has gone along, but the more time you have five on five and also on the power play, the better off you're gonna be in the game. Yeah, and as Roby, our camera guy last night, and his beautiful tones are talking through the stadium today, we're gonna have uh, lineups right now for the Musketeers and the Bowling Green Falcons. And the starters out there for the Falcons are Mikey Papuanu, Cole Ferry, and Chase Denall. And defensemen are Trey Zeeble and Trent Gray. So the same starting lineup as last night. We'll start the game here tonight at the slate. And we'll see a lot of that line, and we'll continue doing that. A player from the first line, that being Chase Denall. as Roby announces the starting lineup. Um, do you have anything to add from last night's game? I mean, I know it was one of the biggest games of the season and it was also one of the most intense and exciting games that I've ever seen from this team this year and uh, last year included. Um, I mean, do you think they'll use the, um, the momentum from last night's game and carry it on into this game? Like, is it like an energy booster, a confidence booster? What do you think? I think it has to be, I mean, you lose to a team 12 years straight, and it's your arch rival. You have the Division One. You just upset a Division One program. You absolutely love to see that. Um, yeah, I think it's going to take a momentum boost. This, this team has very momentum, momentum focused. So mm -hmm. having some positive momentum on their side and breaking up that four-game losing streak is huge. We'll see what we'll see what happens here. And uh, we will take a second break as we hear the greatest song in sports: the national anthem.
And we are back after hearing the greatest song in all of sports, the United States National Anthem. It is time for some ACHA Division II hockey. If you're just tuning in, I'm Ben Shannon, my partner, the play-by-play, -play, his beautiful tone, Justin Chicatano. And we will just get ready to set this up. 20 minutes on the clock, 0-0 game as we are ready for puck drop. For the Falcons chasing all, Cole Ferry out there right now is uh, the defense pair that we've seen all season. Trey, Trey Zebel and Trent Gray, two absolute monsters out in defense. And we're going to see Denal take the opening face off. Excuse me. They skate up to freshman goalie Jack Smalley as we hear breathe in, breathe out. And we are ready for puck drop as and soon as the ref drops it. And we're waiting for all the players to get set. As it looks like one of the players on Xavier is still putting on equipment. And they're going to put the pucks over in the penalty box. And Denal will be on the draw. The wingers with him on the right, Papuanu on the left, Cole Ferry. And as you said before, the left defenseman, Trent Gray, and, and right defenseman, Trey Zeeble. And here we go, Justin. Fits off one back by Denal. Gray gets back to it. Gray over to Zeeble. Zeeble handle, he handles it there and he throws it up past Ferry. Played back in by Xavier. He goes past Gray as he wants to go chop at it. Now Gray tried to throw it around the boards, but it was blocked off. Now, and now Denal battling for it there. Puck now behind the net. Poke check there by Denal as he takes it away. Xavier coming a lot more aggressive than I think the Bowling Green Falcons were expecting. Mm -hmm. They came right at him. Now it's thrown in as Smalley will go behind the net to play it. He stops the puck off there for Gray. Gray board pass as he misses man. That was Papuanu, but Denol, he gets the puck and he's cross-checked into the boards. Now it's put in front and poked away. But now, but now Xavier will take it back. Now in the near corner, pass across. Back to the point and a shot blocked off there by Zebel. The shot there went wide. bowling has got to adapt right here. And it's thrown back in. Gray will play it back behind the net. Gray slowly takes it, and a chip pass over to Nitschke, went off his stick, and now Xavier takes it back. Now thrown back into the near corner in the Xavier defensive zone. Turn around, stopped up there, whacking at it is Horvath, and he gets to it. Trying to settle it down, <coughs> excuse me, and he does. And his pass was deflected, and now a breakaway chance. Smalley waiting, and a big save that made there by Smalley as it went off the glove. Huge save by the freshman there. Bowling Green just needs to, needs to kind of wake now up here. Front, it's loose. Horvat has it and a shot, and they score. Xavier. Only a minute 34 into the game, and Xavier takes the one nothing lead. A really, really impressive start by the Musketeers here. Musketeers did exactly what they needed to right there as, they, as they're bumping right now for Bowling Green. They kind of just did not come out as hot as they did against Toledo. Maybe just playing back a little. You can't do that in the ACHA. You never know what's going to happen in these games. They came out quick, and, man, that was a quick goal. Bowling has got to adapt as the Luke Schuler line comes out. And obviously, look, it's, it's not the start that you want. We, like, we all know that. But it's like we said in, in the pregame, uh, this team, they do great answering back uh, when they're down and after they, give up, after they uh, give up a goal. So let's see how the response is here. Yeah, they got to respond right here. Back out to the point, Dirk Mott keeps it in on the line. It goes past Nelson there. Now Nelson has it. To the backhand in front, but it was blocked off. Now Dirk Mott, a big drive, blocked in front. Comes in front, and a save made there by the Xavier Netminder on the shot from Colin Nelson. And that will stop play with 17.55 left to go. Great, Great save there by Xavier. as we're getting ready for the faceoff right in front of the uh, Bowling Green zone, or the Xavier netminder, I mean. And Xavier will skate this puck up on a big and trip And a big right hit there by Dubendorfer. Schutte has it, Schutte, pass across, and they score! Jacob Dubendorfer, and the game is tied, just like that. First goal of the season for Jacob Dubendorfer. You love to see that. Absolutely beautiful goal right there. Duby skates off to the bench. And what I want starts playing, and Bowling Green is back, and it's we're tied 1-1. One, one, one. 
I mean, an unbelievable patience there from Shooty. He waited as long as he could, got the puck in the side. He saw Dubendorfer across. He had two guys, one on each side, and he gave it over to Dubendorfer, and he stuffed it in. High blocker side. Great shot there by Dubendorfer. Great finish. Now it's one back by, uh, by uh, Xavier. Now here comes Xavier. And the forward miss ends the puck there. Now behind the net. And a takedown there by Dirkman. Great play there by Colin Dirkman. And now he takes it out. Still has the puck. Skating with it through neutral ice. Moves on in. Pass across. And then draws a shot. And it went wide. That's exactly how you want to respond if you're Bowling Green, as they still have it in the Xavier offensive zone. He shoots. Oh, and that's going to be right off the post. We apologize for the difficulties with the scoreboard. Now it's thrown out. And Gray skates up with it. Gray tried to deke, but he, he got poke checked and he took a tumble down in the zone. Then a puck comes back up and neutral ice and whistle stops play. And that's, I believe they just called a trip on Xavier. And yes, that was correct. Number 23 for the Musketeers will go to the box and we'll see our first Bowling Green power play of the game. And then throughout the unit of Zebul, Papuanu, uh, Denal, Ferry, and Nitschke. And we saw this same setup last night. And Denal on the draw. Denal wins it back over to Zebul. Zebul over to Papuanu. Back to Zebul now. Now Papuanu again. He shoots, save made there. In the backhand, clearing attempt was blocked off by Papuanu. And it comes over to Denal. Denal has it at the boards. Spins back. And, and he's going to get it back over to the point, but he could not. But they keep it in. Zebul has it now. Great, sick work there. Now Nitschke. Nitschke over to Ferry. Ferry, a pass across as it, as it was tipped. Papuanu has it now. He shoots, save made there by the Xavier Netminder, and he holds it. Now some. Physical play after the whistle, 16, 18 to go in the first. I believe that was Trey Zebel in the front of the net right there, the freshman getting that puck and making sure they don't dump it, having that poked right to the blue line. Great opportunity there, Bollinger, he's got to keep doing that with 124 left in the uh, power play. That picks up one back by Denal. That Papuanu back over to Denal. I'm sorry, Zebel, a shot on save made there by the Xavier Netminder, thrown around, and it goes out. Zebul has it now. Zebul's backhand pass over to Denal. Back over to Zebul. Now Denal has it. Gets it with speed through neutral ice. Moves on in, goes around the defense, and a shot there and a save made by the Xavier Netminder. Kept in by Tigs, though. Great play there to keep it in. And now right. Ferry. He settles that pass down. So far these past days, we've seen a lot of great plays by these freshmen. Tiggs had a great game last night. Now Nitschke pass across. Just keep it in the zone, playing defense. You know, obviously on the scoring sheet, but for a defender, he had an absolutely beautiful game. Now Papuanu, long pass across, was tipped over into the corner. Tiggs has it now. He spins back behind the net. 30 seconds to go on the power play. And now Denal. Denal pass in the middle, and it went through the stick of Nitschke. And he gets it back out to, to the point. Now Rudo, back over to Horvath. Horvath, now Tiggs. Tiggs shoots and it was tipped up and over the net. Now Rudo has it. Oh. Controlling the puck, but. That's it, in the middle was blocked off and cleared back down and that will do it for the power play. Just under 50 minutes to go in the first, 1-1 one, one score between Xavier and Bowling Green. Yeah, Bowling Green did a great job keeping that in the, the offensive zone for that power play, but it, Z, or Xavier did kind of what Miami did and just let him pass it around, but never found an open shot. And now Tiggs over to Rudo. Rudo back over to Tiggs. Tiggs spins. Now Harchi. She pass over to Rudo. Rudo gives it over to Horvath. Horvath moves on in. He takes it down the far boards. Into the middle, now he has a shoot. Save made there by the Xavier goaltender, and he holds it. 14, 16, and go in the first. Beautiful, beautiful move by Horvath right there, just skating right through the, the Musketeer defense. As we'll get a line change. And the faceoff will be at the far side of the Xavier defensive zone. Dubendorfer on the draw, the forwards with him are the Chandler Rodell and Jake Schutte, and the defenseman Trey Zebel and Trent Gray. And the shot thrown on was uh, deflected over behind the net, and now thrown in front, and, and it was tipped. 
They kept in there by Gray. He hit there in the corner by Odell. Now Dubendorfer steals it. And this pass, is, he, was, he uh, fanned on it. Chandler Odell, the Tampa Bay native. He's, his family's in the house. They made the long trip up to Bowling Green, Ohio. That puck thrown down low. Shooty racing in after it. Now Odell steals it. Odell turned it back, hanging in front, but he was poke checked. Now behind the net. Xavier looks to break out. Pass across, stolen by, uh, by Odell, but he was poke checked, and now Zebel has it. Zebel pass across over to Shooty, who tips it in as the Falcons will make a line change. Pass across as the Musketeers attempt to, to uh, get the puck in the zone, and they do. And now Gray will take over. And now Zebel. Give a long pass up over to Nitschke. Now Nelson went off his stick into the zone. Now thrown out. Stopped up there. And Nelson trying to get to it. Still battling for it. And he wasn't able to keep it in as now it's cleared out of the zone back into neutral ice. And now Zebu will take it back in the BG zone. And Gray, put, uh, and, uh, Gray put it off the boards and off the outside of the net. And, and now Gray has it again. And now Wood. Gets up with it, and now Nelson. Nelson, great move there. He still has it. And now Wood, a shot save made there, and it's held. And you want to talk about team chemistry there, Justin. Zebel and Gray, we've talked about it all season, the freshman and the junior. They've, they've been a great defensive pairing, and we saw in the beginning, we, we as soon as we saw it, it was instant chemistry. They've been playing great so far. Face off at the near side. Schuler on the draw, and it's one back by Xavier. And now a puck battle as Nelson knocked a man down. Now it's kept in there by Klein. Puck bouncing, and now it's taken out. And now Schuler has it. Schuler, and he gets through the two guys. Pass across, now Wood. Pass in the middle, and a delayed penalty coming up. As now BG will get their second power play of the game. Yeah, Schuler got crushed right there. He was already hurting from last night's big uh, shot block in that Toledo game that ended up having us win it. We'll see what happens with this one. I did not will have a musketeer in the box. I couldn't make out what number it was. But nevertheless, BG goes back on, on the, the uh, man advantage, and let's see if they can get more looks here on the power play. Nice stop right there. And now Zebel could pass over to Denal, was too far away from his stick, and now Nitschke trying to get to it. He wasn't able to, and the backhander, the clearing attempt was blocked again. Now pass across, now Denal moves in. No, a pass in the middle and a save made there. It's loose in the crease, still loose, and it goes off the outside of the net. And the net came off, 11.59 left to go. I don't know how that one didn't go in, Justin. <laughs> there was about. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I believe it looked like from our angle, we didn't get a, we didn't get too good of a look at it. I believe it hit off the outside of the net on the far side. Yeah, lucky break for the Musketeers. That's 91 for 91 and Xavier got called for a hooking call for the people keeping track at home. And that is the first net off the bearings of the night, Justin. And Denol on the draw. He went forward, and now Papuano has it. Pass back over to Zebel. Zebel to Denol. With that dangerous shot. And he threw it towards the net, and it was deflected wide. Now Papuano waits with it. And now Zebel. Zebel back to Papuano. He moves in. He shoots, and it was deflected wide. And now Denol pass down low. Papuano. Over to Ferry. Ferry waits with it. And gets it back over to Zebel. And now Denal. Denal moves in. Down low over to Nitschke. Nitschke in the middle. Ferry a shot. Off the glove. Big save. And another shot and a save made there by the Xavier netminder. The pass in front was deflected back behind the net, but they, st they still maintain possession. Excuse me. Just under a minute left on the power play. And now Denal. He had to go past him, but Nitschke gets to it. And now Denal. Back over to Nitschke. Nishki pass back. Papuano had to hop over sick and it leaves the zone. Tough break there for BG as they, as they will now look to change the power play units. Yeah, Bowling Green will change, like you just said, the power play unit looking for one last rush with 27 seconds left on the power play. And now Rudo heads down the ice. In the middle he has it. What's with it? Goes behind the net. Great work here by Rudo. And now Tiggs. Very patient by Mark Rudo right there. Now Horvath, back over to Tiggs. Eight seconds to go on the power play. Shot on, deflected wide. Now Jaros, back over to Rudo. Rudo over 
the pigs. And a one-timer save made there with the shoulder. And we're back to full strength on both sides. And a long pass out. And it went past Rudo. Now Pigs will get back to it. Pigs threw it up. <coughs> threw it up. It was deflected near Jaros, and he couldn't get to it. As it looked right there, the Musketeers kind of had a miscommunication. One, he was looking to find the guy out of the box. The guy out of the box was skating back to the net. Or back to the, uh, and now back to the bench. And now Sorry. Outside is called. 9.56 left to go in the first 1-1 one -one between Xavier and Bowling Green. 9.57 left in the first period. And the faceoff will be outside the Xavier defensive zone. Dubendorfer on the draw. The faceoff will make by Xavier. As I look to transition. It was thrown in near Smalley. Now over to Odell, now Dubendorfer. He has the only goal in the game, and a two-on-one chance here. Dubendorfer and Schutte, and pass across. Schutte, save made there by the Xavier goaltender. He's looked sharp here early in the first. We're about halfway through the first now, and he's made quite a few out outstanding saves. Yeah, and we talked to his dad before the game while we were getting our dinner. He was very confident in his son's ability to play goaltender, and so far we've seen a lot of great work out of him. Now puck battle in the corner, Dubendorfer. Now Odell trying to get to it, but he could not. And the clearing attempt went off of Shooty and out of play. 9-10 to go in the first. And the faceoff will be outside of the zone because Shooty had to go off him and out of play. Yeah, he took that one right off the old noggin. That's why he used your head out there. Shooter on the draw, forwards with him are Jeff Wood and Colin Nelson. And uh, defenseman Nick Piggs and Logan Harchie. Schuler, another family that came down for the weekend. Schuler's from around Chicago, Illinois. His family up to see this game too. A lot of family in the Slater Family Ice Arena to see these clubbers play. Pass up the middle. Went, it went wide of the Xavier forward. Now Harchie gets it out. Now Wood trying to kick it to his skate. Now a puck battle at the near boards. And it comes out. Xavier maintains control. Pass in front, went off of Smalley, it comes out. Backhand shot, save made by Smalley with the pad. Big save with the right pad by Jack Smalley. Now pass across, and the pass could not be handled, and now it's in the crease, loose, and now it comes back out, as now Wood races out with it. It could be a three on two. Pass hopped over Schuler, second, a big hit there. Now, now Nelson gets to it, back pass from just wide of Schuler. Schuler with the physical play there. Now pass out, went wide of Xavier forward, streaking towards it. Now behind the net. And a great defensive play there by Carter Klein. And Klein gets out over to Wood. Wood trying to get to it. Now it's taken over. Kept in the zone and the shot on was blocked in the slot. And now Dirk Matt is trying to play it out and went off the Xavier defenseman and out of the zone. Bowling Green playing a lot more like they did last night versus, versus the beginning of this period. Very aggressive, just one-on-one -on -one man, -on man coverage. Now back pass, back behind the net. Klein has it now. Klein throws it around the board. Xavier takes back control. Puck hops in the air near the boards. Nelson trying to poke at it. Now Xavier still has it. Shot on, and it went wide. Now shot here from the point. Went high and wide once again. And Papuan who chops at it as he took a check. And then also took a check there by the stanchion. And and that was a rough place to be checked as he went off the uh, glass after he got hit. And we've already seen that once from Chase Denall getting hit off the stanchion right there as that puck, I believe, fell into the Bowling Green bench. Yep, and the faceoff will be in the BG uh, zone. Yeah. 7-10 left in the first period. It's tied up at one after Jacob Dubendorfer tied it earlier in this period if you're just tuning in. And Denall on the draw. Swung back by BG. And the pass attempt by Zebul as he lost it. Now pass in the middle and a great tie up there by Ferry. And now Denal races out with it. Always dangerous. Moves in. Goes around the defense in the corner. He has it now. And he had two guys on him, but he still is trying to get to it. Great effort there from Denal. Now Ferry has it. Ferry waiting with it. Back over to Gray. Gray, a big stop shot, and it went wide. Papuanu. Back over to Zebul. Zebul back over to Gray. Gray shoots it again, and it was deflected. 
And it comes back to him and a shot on there. Glove save made there by the Xavier goaltender as he holds it with six and a half minutes to go in the first. 1-1 one, one score still up between BG and Xavier. Yeah, Bowling Green, Bowling Green doing a great job of just putting a lot of shots on this Xavier goal. Like we said, we did talk to his dad earlier in the earlier in the night and he said he had the first four games, he faced 126 shots. Man had to be living in an ice box after that. And that one will be won by Bowling Green and then a shot on net will, ooh, nasty hit right there. And Papuano trying to battle for it, Zeeb will still there. Now I'll take it back by Xavier, but Ferry stole it. Right back again. Gray throws it in, off the glass. Papuano, and now Denol in the middle, and it was just past Ferry. Now Papuano, pass across. Zeeble gets to it, Zeeble pass across. Ferry a shot, and it was blocked. And a great block there by the Xavier player as he is down and in some discomfort, but he gets back up as he was down for a bit on the ice, but good to see him get back up. Huge block right there. You do not want, if you're uh, the Musketeers, you do not want Cole Ferry wide open in front of your net. No, nope. He's very dangerous. Now a chance here for Xavier. The shot was blocked off by Zeeble. But that will stop play with 5.36 left to go in the first. Time to get funky. 5.36 left in this first period. We're tied one to one. Horvath on the draw. It's one back by Xavier. The shot was blocked off by Rudo. Now thrown down low. Back at the point. Xavier controls in the zone. Rudo poked it. Xavier D-man will get back to it. Like we've said, Rudo does not give up on plays. Probably one of the most gritty players on the team as he falls down. Uh, That's on cue. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's like when I said uh, Schuler, or any line could score, and Schuler scored right away after that and a few games ago. But, yeah, Rudo just loves to not give up on plays, loves to be gritty out there. Absolutely love watching him as a hockey fan. Now shot on, save. And Odell wants to go chop at the rebound, but it, po it popped over his stick. Chandler Odell has one point on the season right now with an assist. He wanted that first, uh, Gino. Now Nitschke behind the net. Set it over towards Horvath, one past him. Now Tig backhands one back in deep. Behind the net, Nitschke tries to get to it, and he will get to it. Now Harchi, back over to Nitschke. Tig's looking to set up that big slap shot, but he decides to skate away instead. And now Tig's down low, one past Horvath, and it will come over to Harchi, and now Horvath. Horvath and Odell battling for it there. It's thrown back around where Harchi will get to it. Harchi spins and keeps it in. The drive there went up and over the net off the stick of Horvath. Now Tiggs sends it over to Jaros. Jaros pass across but wide of Odell. Odell back pass over to Harchi. Now Odell, and he got, got run into hard there. Now a shot there went wide. As Tiggs was looking for a deflection. Now Odell, pass across, went wide of Tiggs, and it's cleared back down, and the big hit there by Odell at the boards. And Great that's gonna be a delayed there. penalty. They're gonna get Chandler Odell on, I believe, a boarding call, but I didn't see his back turned. We'll see what the call is here. Maybe not. I don't it's not a penalty. Oh, I don't know what the call was then there. I saw that hand go up and assumed- It was icing. Icing? It's an early the, icing call, the, but- the, and the faceoff will come back into the zone. My apologies to the fans out there. Now, Schuler won it back. Zebel a shot. And a tip there by Schuler went just wide. Great tip there by Schuler. And the net came off. That's two. It's a lot. We're getting our second net off way earlier than last night. I don't think we got recent. any of them in the first period last no, night. No, it, it definitely came with the second. It was like the penalty to Susan. Won it back both through his uh, defenseman. Now, Dirk Mott. Pass across over to Zeeble. Zeeble working his way in. Back pass. Nelson put it in front, and that was a pass in front, I believe, for Wood. And, and now it's loose, but the goaltender down comes out. And it went just past Schuler as it couldn't corral it, and now it's cleared out by Xavier. Great drive by Zeeble and Gray there just to get Xavier to dump it. 
Oh, and Tri uh, Trent Gray gets hit hard, but he's back up. That was uh, Dirk Mott. Or Dirk Mott, I'm sorry. And now it's thrown back down the ice, and icing is called. 2.44 to go in the uh, first period. So a 1 1 score between Bowling Green and Xavier. Dirk Matt, uh, high, high school and childhood friends with uh, only goal scorer for the Falcons so far tonight, Jacob Dubendorfer. Mm -hmm. We've said that. A lot of team chemistry from the throughout the years on this pro in this program for Bowling Green right now. Two two players from Tempest, Michigan. And a one timer it was deflected in front and it comes near Smalley and the net came off, I think. I think the I think the ref lost it. They're not fixing the net. I think the ref just lost it. Was blocked off. Now Papawanu. Races out with it. We lost it. Uh, Ferry. Pass across was taken away. Oh. Oh. Xavier throws it out. And here come, here come the, the Musketeers, and the shot arm was stopped by Harchie. Now it's thrown back in. Ferry. And he, he lost the puck. Now Papuanu takes over. Now thrown back in by Xavier. A big hit there by Ferry. And I just got word from Captain Adam Firstloff, who was not playing tonight due to a lower body injury. He will be in the first admission for an interview. Mm -hmm. Talk about the program this season, what he's seen from the team so far on the bench or on the sidelines tonight. And now three on two chance, possibly. Tiggs brings it in. Takes a shot pad save made there by the Xavier goaltender. We talked about how powerful this team is. Uh, Nick Tiggs just a has an absolute monster of a slap shot. We've seen a few times he has two goals so far this season. And now Gray works going in, and a shot and a glove save made there by the Xavier goaltender, and he will hold it 121 left to go here in the first. Faceoff will be at the far side. Horvath will take it. And he wins it back over to Rudo. Rudo throws it down low. Now Nitschke, pass in the middle. One timer save made there in the rebound. Rudo trying to get to it. It's loose and it's cleared out of the crease. Yeah, that one kind of bounced on Rudo's stick. I don't even think he knew where the puck was. Now rolls it on Smalley and he will cover it up. Smart One play by Smalley right there. 103 to go in the first. Keep the uh, same players out there. Horvath will be on the draw once again. This one back by Xavier, and they've done a great job on faceoff so far here in the first period. It's thrown down low. Big spin move. A great defensive play there with the stick. Great. Xavier still controls, and they backhand it in deep. Xavier doing a great. 1 1. Stay tuned for in a few minutes. We'll have the Dirty Birds. Intermission report as Adam Birchloff will head over here and we will have an interview with him. We will be right back.
Hello, everybody. I'm here with BG Captain Adam Bertsloff. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Cool. All right. So, um, how'd you feel your team played in the uh, first period? Um, I mean, it could have been a lot better. Uh, one to one. Can't be. Can't be upset about that. But uh, definitely got to be a little more hungry here. Uh, we got plenty of opportunities, but uh, just got to bury some more goals here. We'll be all right. And we've seen a lot of guys step up so far this season. And last night, uh, Jack Smalley had an outstanding performance in that uh, last night. Uh, were you surprised by that at all? I mean, I know you guys have confidence in everybody, but it was an outstanding performance. What are your thoughts on how he played uh, last night? I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. What a what a special kid. He really he, – he's a gamer. Um, you know, he's, he's all dialed in. Uh, before the game today, he was dialed in. Yesterday, I mean, I've never seen a goalie that dialed in before, so – I'm um, not surprised at all, um, definitely uh, replicating that same result tonight here so far. Mm -hmm. And what are your overall expectations for the team uh, this year throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, we have a special group. Um, we've been saying it uh, for a while now, and, you know, we've had some ugly losses this year. You know, you're going to have a bad night every once in a while, but um, I definitely expect to win a conference championship this year, and I think all the guys in the locker room expect that too. Um, we've been working our bag off, and we're really excited to see what the next couple of weeks are going to bring. But um, it's got to start somewhere here. we got to bury a couple goals and figure out tonight. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, thank you so much. And we will be back for the second period coming up in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere.
And we are back for the start of the second period between Xavier and Bull. And we will head into the second period with the score being 1-1. Yeah, Bowling Green looking to be a lot more aggressive this period. We talked to equipment manager, ja equipment manager Jack Ors, and he's pleased with the performance, but he wants more. Now Ferry, toe drag, still has it. Hard on the puck, and he threw it towards the net and went wide. And now Xavier takes it back. They turn off over to Zeebel. Zeebel over to Gray. Now sipped in there by Ferry. Now behind the net. Now comes over to Papuanu at the far corner. Nice jump by the ref right there. Now goes behind the net, Ferry trying to give chase. Comes over to Denal. Denal tried to put it in front, he still has it, and a shot and a save made there by the Xavier netminders. He didn't quite get all of it, but still great positioning there by the Xavier goaltender as he made the stop. He's made quite a few big saves here. Yeah, Xavier's- Many in the first period. Yeah, Xavier's netminder right now, keeping him really into this one. Bowling Green definitely leading in shots. I don't have that one straight, but. And here we go. Horvath on the draw for Bowling Green. Horvath pulls a whistle. That's a false start is called. And Xavier, do they have to change centers? No, they do not. They thought they did, but they didn't. The faceoff is won by Xavier as they're able to get it out of the zone. It's thrown in down in the far corner. Archie going to get it. Archie throws it over to Nishki. It went off of him, and he gets to it. Now Rudo, with speed, he moves on in. And he, he just lost it, but he gets it back. Back pass, a one-timer, and a save made there by, by the Xavier goaltender. But they keep it in. Shot on by Nishki, was deflected wide. Now pass back, it went in between Tiggs and Rudo, and goes all the way back down. This is a very tight game so far, and we've talked about it in previous T TC or TSCHL games. This is in a very important game. One of the series is that's up three points are up to grab for the conference standings. Bowling Green currently leading the North Division. And that's always a tongue twister. T S C H L. Yeah. <laughs> now pass up towards Rudo and he gets to it. He has Horvath and Wood with him. Horvath over to Rudo and a one timer save made the rebound and it went wide back behind the net as he couldn't get a stick on it. Now Wood throws it back over to Harchi. Harchi flips it behind the net. Rudo giving chase and he will get to it. Spins back as he's checked there. He throws it back behind the net. The far corner now slipped out out of his zone towards Dirk Mott. It went off his glove and he, and he handles it now and gets it over to Klein. Klein now over to Nelson. And now Wood. And a three on two. Oh. And, a, and a big hit there by Schuler at the red line. Yeah, he's playing very much more aggressive than we saw last year. He led the team in points last year. Now thrown down the ice, and whistle pulls the play dead. 17-19 to go in the second. Doesn't seem like the Xavier bench is liking that call right there on the icing call. Either, regardless, we will have an icing call, and Bowling Green will have a faceoff. It was. I, I don't believe it was icing. I'm not too sure what the call was. I'm not too sure. I. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a little I, confused I know as well. Small, Smalley played the puck behind the net, and then the whistle blew. There was no penalty. Maybe it was a maybe it was a high stick, possibly. Yeah, I mean you don't get many explanations, but that one was weird. Mm -hmm. Now the near boards goes over into the corner. The shot on save made by Small in a great positioning, and he will cover up. And is there a little tie up? Protect Jack Smalley. Jack Smalley's parents also in the crowd. He, their son made his debut last night in a great game. Thirty-seven saves, it. and and. I know we've been talking a lot about the Xavier goaltender uh, here tonight. Um, Smalley's had quite a few saves here tonight as well. A very impressive uh, hockey career as well. Won a state title at St. Francis of Ohio. And the face off one back by BG as they hey. try to clear it. Hey, music! Music! Dubendorfer. Throws it around. And now Odell trying to get to it as he was tripped up and a penalty is called. And that will send BG to their first power play of the period and their third power play of the contest. Chandler Odell looks a little shaken up getting back to the bench, but he skates at his own power. Hey. Keep going. And they 
they throw out the normal power play unit. Uh, Papuanu, Ferry, Vinal, Zebul, and Nitschke. Papuanu over to Zebul. And now Denal. Denal shoots high and wide. Now back to the point. Ferry has it. Ferry passed across and Denal puts it in front and it went just wide of Nitschke. Great pass attempt there from Denal. Great look. And now Denal. Now Nitschke in the middle. Ferry, a one-timer save made there. And the clearing attempt is kept in. Pass across. Now crossed by Papuanu, but it was kept in as it, it went off of Ferry. Ferry trying oh. to battle for it, but it's cleared out. Great effort by Cole Ferry there to get in front of that one. The second, second one just didn't go his way, and that's 91 for Xavier's second penalty of the game. I just looked up and saw who just got the penalty. Now it's loose in the slot. And Xavier, they look to clear, and they do. It goes past Zebel and Smalley will play it behind the net. Zebel has it now. Zebul works his way through neutral ice. Pass across over to Ferry as the same unit remains out on the ice. Most of the same unit as they made a, a, a few changes. Pass for Rudo went just wide of him and it's poked out of the zone. Zebul races back to go retrieve it. Bongrin looking like they're getting a little frustrated out there. They can't do that in a tight 1-1 game like this. And now Jaros moves in. He tried to shoot it, but he fanned on as the puck was bouncing. And now Rudo maintains control. Back to the point, over to Horvath. Horvath back over to Tig. Tig shoots, save, made, and the rebound. And Jaros couldn't stuff it in as he was being checked there from behind. Another Falcon teammates for a long time, Jack Jaros and ja Jack Smalley. Or John Jaros. Now Jack Horvath Smalley. moves in, and a shot was deflected up into the mesh, and that will stop play with 14.43 to go in the second, and four seconds left to go on the power play. Yeah, as like we said, as like I was just saying before that, deflection goes into the me mesh, Justin. Jack Smalley, John Jaros did win a state title together their senior year last year, now both freshmen for the Bowling Green Clubbers. Vizup will be at the far side. Horvath, Rudo, Jaros, Nelson, and Tiggs is the power play unit out there right now. Horvath is the centerman, and he won it over into the corner. As that will end up power play for the Falcons. And now Nelson, and he put it in front, a shot by Horvath was blocked. And he tries to get to it, and he was taken off of him, and Jarlos ran into the net, and that will stop play. 14.28 to go in the second now. Yeah, I think Jarlos got tripped up there accidentally. I'm not calling for a penalty, and the penalty wasn't called, but I think he just, too many people right in front of that net, got tied up, hit a stick, fell over, knocked over the net off the bearings. That will be the third time it officially is coming off. I've third or fourth, I lost track. And the forwards on the ice are Jake Schutte, Trevor Odell, and the lone goal scorer for BG, Jacob Dubendorfer. And the faceoff rolls in on the Xavier goalie, and he covers up as we will do it again from the same circle. And as I was saying, the defensemen are Tiggs and Harchie. Yeah, big, big signings right there, Tiggs and Harchie in the offseason. Dubendorfer, gritty player, played here last year. Very happy to see him net his first one as a, you know, as a colleague. Now Odell puts it down low, and now shoot, he put it in the middle to Dubendorfer, and he was tied up there as he couldn't get the shot off. Yeah, Xavier defense and the goalie are doing a great job of stopping Bowling Green from chances. They're, they're giving BG a, a very, very uh, rough time in the middle. They're not letting a, a lot of passes get through in the middle, especially one-timers. As a Tampa Bay na native, Chandler Odell. Odell over to Harchie. Archie throws it in. Dubendorfer in to get it. He spins and he's hit there. And now Odell takes over. Odell poked it into the far corner. Dubendorfer back ends one down behind the net. And now it comes over by the near board. Shooty trying to get to it. Back out to the point to Archie. Archie a shot. Club save as the Xavier goaltender saw it all the way through. And that will stop play with 13.40 to go in the second period. Still a 1 1 score between Xavier and BG. Yeah, if you're Bowling Green, I mean, I know the, the goal or the scoreboard doesn't show it, but you got to keep doing what you're doing. Just keep putting pucks on net. It's the ACHA way, and you'll find it in the back of the net at some point. Now face off one at, at the near corner. Wood trying to give chase. He tried to get a stick on it, but he could not, and now they take it out. 
Pass in the middle. Klein pokes it away. Now Gray skates out with it. Gray running through there. He was able to get it down low. And a great move there by the Xavier uh, defenseman as they bring it out. And it's going to be a chance here for Xavier. I know, great sick work there by Jeff Wood. Jeff Wood, another one of those players that came back from last season and still with still with the clubbers as there was a lot of turnover this offseason with a lot of new talented freshmen. Nelson trying to give chase. It was poked away from him, and he's still, uh, still pursuing it. But now it's taken back by Xavier. Pass off the boards, taken over. But now Schuler steals it into the middle. Nelson and he tried to throw it towards the net, but it was blocked off. And now the Musketeers race out with it. Now, and now this could be a chance here. Pass in the middle, save made on the tip by Smalley. Great save there, there by uh, Jack Smalley, excuse me. Yeah, great play by Jack Smalley right there. The back end clearing attempt was stopped off as Xavier maintains possession in the zone, but now Nelson steals it. Nelson banks one off the boards and it goes out. That heads down the ice, nice things waved off on the tip. Papuanu trying to get to it and he was checked off the puck. Now Xavier maintains control. Yeah, Xavier doing a great job of what Miami and Indiana seem to do those past four games before a Toledo game of just shutting his first line down, keeping them quiet. Because they can really take over a game. Zeebel's pass went wide, and that will stop play. 11.51 to go in the second. As PG will be forced to keep these same players out there. Forwards are Denol, Papuano and Ferry, and uh, defensemen. Dirk Mott and Zebel as the defensive pairings, they almost got their changes done. Yeah, I mean, you love to see an icing when everybody just runs to the bench because they know it's gonna be an icing and you gotta, gotta get as much people off the ice as possible. Ferry keeps it in. Ferry back pass over to Denal. Denal lost it as he was checked, but Ferry gets to it, and throws it back out to the point. And now Dirk Mott. Dirk Mott a shot, and that may have been tipped. And a save made there by the Xavier goaltender. Nice way to tip that off the puck right there from a lot of white jerseys. Now Denol's pass was taken away. Now Zebel takes it away and he moves on in. He gets around the defense. Back pass, Ferry, what a move, and he put it in the middle. Nobody was there. Oh, rough break, and a shot on was blocked. How many times have we seen Cole Ferry do that, though? It oh. seems like he has no room, and he still finds a way to make a play. L unfortunately, no Falcons were that right there at the and time. And we saw him pull up that toe drag last night, and Ferry went on the, on the back end, and that goal happened. What, like almost 24 hours ago now, and I still can't get over that goal. Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. And now Denol, and he had it poked off him. Great defensive play there by the Xavier Musketeer player pursuing Denol. Now Denol takes it back in the D zone. Long pass over to Nitschke, settles it down. Moves on in, and on the backhand, he scores! Great individual effort there by Chase Nitschke. He went around the defense and put it in on the backhand and with 10.32 left to go in the second period, BG has their first lead of the game. What a goal by Chase Nitschke. Yeah, Chase Nitschke, absolutely a beautiful goal right there. You love to see that for Bowling Green. That's his second goal in as many nights as he had the only goal that didn't come from the first line. Um, last night from against Toledo, huge momentum boost to the Falcons. They cannot let Xavier respond right there. Or right here, I mean, rather. Horvath will be on the draw. And look how fast Bowling Green is ready to get back to action. Now, now Nitschke trying to go get it, and he does. Stops up there. Back out to the point. Higgs over to Harchie. Harchie puts it towards the net. Tipped and a save made there by the Xavier goaltender. And now Rudo takes it back. Rudo passed across, and now passed back across by Nitschke. Went wide of, of a few players. And that chased an all Nitschke connection as a uh, our PA guy, Roby, just said that Nitschke Denal connection when they're changing lines and Denal hasn't left the ice yet. Scores again. Love to see that in the middle of a transition. And they keep the same players out on the ice with Rudo Horvath, Nitschke, Tiggs, and Harchi. Horvath on the draw once again. And he wins it back over to, to Nitschke. And Nitschke throws it around near Rudo. Rudo and he tried to get to it, but he could not. Now cleared out and back into the BG zone by Xavier. Now thrown back out into neutral ice there by Harchie. Xavier takes it back and they work their way on in. 
I'm thrown in the middle. It's loose. Now I think I'm the Xavier D man. I'm thrown towards the slot and it went wide over into the near corner. Now thrown in front was tipped. Now in the slot, a shot saved made by Smalling. The rebound is controlled by Rudo. But now, but now it's taken back by Xavier. Nine and a half minutes to go in the second. BG with a 2 1 lead. And the Xavier D man mishandled the puck and, and they are forced to, to uh, reset as they make a change. And now Harchi. Pass over to his Z partner, that's Tiggs. Tiggs back over to Harchie. Yeah, we, we won't have shots number shots against for uh, Zebelton or against Smalley tonight. He's faced so far probably less shots needed last night, and man, is he playing well. We should be able to get that set for you during the second intermission. 9.03 to go in the second now as they face off. We'll be in the BG offensive zone as the puck rolled in on Frambis as he covered the puck. Two to one right now, Bowling Green Falcons to lead. And now Dubendorfer will take the draw. And the official saying something, and he drops the puck. Xavier wins the face up back, and they control back behind the net. It's thrown around. And now Dubendorfer takes over as they maintain control in the zone. Zebel now, Zebel tried to toe drag, but he could not, and now it's cleared out, and this could be a chance for Xavier. They have a forward move. Uh, moving on in. And his teammate could not handle the pass, but Xavier maintains control. And it's thrown towards the net and gloved from the shot from behind the net by Smalley. And great awareness there from Smalley. Eight thirty-nine to go in the second. Two one lead in favor of the BG Falcons. Now pass across. Went wide of the Xavier forward, and now Gray takes over. Gray over to Schutte. Schutte racing after it. Banks it off the boards over to Dubendorfer. Dubendorfer stops up. He was poked off him and kept in the zone by Zebel. Zebel passed across over to Z partner Gray. Gray puts it towards the net, and it was, and it was blocked in front. Now Dubendorfer checked off there. Jarl is trying to help him out, and it's thrown around. Kept in, though, by Zebel. Great speed there from Zebel. Zebel throws it down low in the opposite corner. Now he's put in front, a shot there, and they score! Jake Schutte, his first goal of the season, and it's 3-1 BG, and that's two goals from that line tonight. Dubendorfer and now Schutte. Yeah, you love to see that from Jake Schutte. It's kind of a slow start so far, but very happy to see him net one as well. Great hockey player, even better person, and he's gonna be happy about that one. As Bowling Green now leads three to one with 8.02 left in the second period. And now here's where the momentum really plays a factor because we know they had a two goal lead last night and they went up by another one. And I mean, they had all the, all the, all the uh, momentum. We know one goal can change everything. So here, uh, the next goal here is huge. And now Schuler works his way in. Pass across and Wood just couldn't handle it as it was too far in front of him. And a shot save made there on the tip. And the covering attempt as the goalie missed it. And now it's loose in the crease. It was loose in the crease when the whistle was blown. Uh, 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 excuse me. 7.42 to go in the second. Face off will be at the near circle in the Xavier defensive zone. Schuler on the draw. A controls it off the draw. And, and he tried to throw it into the corner for Nelson, but it was blocked off and now thrown out. Icing waved off there is Logan Hartshe, the freshman will take it. Right in front of the freshman, Jacob Smalley. And I've noticed every single time a player comes towards Smalley, he does this like thing where he like sticks his arms out at the player. I'm not sure, it's probably a big, uh, uh, he's probably trying to uh, uh, distract the player, excuse me. Sorry, I, I could not talk tonight or last night either. Yeah. No, we're good, Justin. Now I mean, thrown out. Go ahead. It's it's well known that ho hockey goalies, great people, but very very weird people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you're alone in that net. You might as well have some fun. 7:03, and as as I say that, Bowling Green will go to the penalty box, and we'll see Xavier's power play for the first time tonight. And it's Colin Nelson taking the penalty. It was a hook. Now the faceoff will be to the right side of uh, Jack Smalley. The penalty killer is out for the Falcons. Cole Ferry, Mikey Papuanu, Trey Zeebel, and Trent Gray. Ferry will be the centerman. And they do a great job of even when the puck is inside of the uh, Xavier, or inside of the offensive zone and Bowling Green's defensive zone, they do a great job of uh, 
No shot on save. It's loose in the crease. Now it's cleared out, and it comes out in a shot and a save made by Smalley, and it was still loose, but an early whistle blew the play dead. Great job by uh, this penalty killing unit to stabilize one man and do not and close the passing lane so that man advantage doesn't really affect the Bowling Green Falcons. We'll see if that happens the same time or once again here. If it's up one back by Ferry. Went towards the crease and now it's cleared out of there by Papuanu. And we saw the um, the BG kill last night. They were outstanding on the penalty kill last night. And this is the first look we're gonna get at the Xavier power play. Yeah, last night they went they went 0 for 2 on uh, power play goals, Toledo rather, and they and Bowling Green had a shorthanded goal, so you really can't complain much about the penalty kill last night. Did an absolute phenomenal job. And they pass by the Xavier defenseman went wide of his teammate, and now they will get re reset again. As they look to enter the zone. Now across it comes, thrown in the middle, and a shot was deflected up into the mesh, and that will stop play with 6.04 left to go in the second, and a minute 01 to go in the Xavier man advantage as they, the uh, Falcons will change penalty killers. They now throw out Denal, Odell, Tiggs, and Harchie. And Denal will be the centerman. And Bowling Green looking to kill this penalty with a minute left. Now in the corner it comes, Denol trying to get to it. Great effort there by Denol, and he was tripped up. No call and there. No, and no, no call there. I, I, don't know. I mean, he wasn't arguing, so maybe he just fell down. And a tip, and they score! What a tip there. And a power play goal makes it a one-goal game. It is now 3-2. to two. And we said, we talked about that uh, that momentum. Bowling Green goes to the box, and now it's only a one-goal game instead of a three-goal game when... Uh, Bowling Green would have scored that next one. Xavier still in this game, 5.49 left in the second period. Beautiful goal, and that's gonna be Xavier players' first goal as they take that puck and chip it into the Xavier bench. And then it's Matt Rupini on the goal. Bowling Green, Bowling Green clubbers like to congratulate him on his first career goal there as they threw that puck inside Xavier bench to save for later. Thrown up. I'm pretty sure that was Rapini. I know I saw a nine on the jersey. I don't think I saw any other number, so I'm guessing it was number nine. Naruto pass in the middle. Horvath back, Hedra, and he put it wide. Oh, what a chance there. What a pass from Ruto over to Horvath, and he just put it wide. Now a tip on, but it was, it was blocked off. It's loose in the crease. And Horvath, the shot, and he scores! He gets another chance just a few seconds later, and he capitalizes on that one. And the Falcons, what they've been doing all year, they answer right back after giving up a goal. And they have their two goal lead back, four to two with 5.25 left to go in the second. And like, and I was about to say, actually, Justin, it's kind of funny, I'm gonna talk, I was gonna talk about Horvath and he's had a great year so far, but he just hasn't seemed to find the net. He nets one right there and now it is four to two Falcons. Bowling Green needs to stay the momentum hot. A three goal lead would be huge for this one. Now throwing down low. As there's three TCHL points right now on the line Up with grabs in this a game. regulation win. Yep. Archie flips it out. It wasn't able to be kept in, and now Nishi versus after. It could be a chance here. Pass in the middle, and it went wide of Horvath. And now Nitschke got ran into, and he's in some discomfort as he heads off to the bench. Hopefully he's okay. And Rudo, and his pass was stolen away by Xavier as they flip it on him. Smalley plays it, and he drops it off for Archie. Odell. It's thrown down low. And the assist on the Bowling Green goal will be goal scored by Horvath, or, or assisted by Rudo and Nitschke. And, Har and Harchi, excuse me, not Nitschke, Harchi. Now Odell shoots and off the shoulder of the Xavier netminder, and it goes up into the mesh, and that will stop play. 4-14 to go in the second. BG with a 4-2 lead over the Xavier Musketeers. And I got to sit down with Chandler Odell earlier today when I was eating lunch in the student union. He really wants this first goal. He's been talking about it for a few weeks. He wants that first goal, so he just keeps firing pucks on net. Hopefully he'll get one right here. And he's looked really good so far in this game. You know, Gray a shot, and he was looking for a tip there. He may have been, and it made its way through, and a save made there 
by the Xavier goaltender Frambus. Now comes back out. Ray and he tried to throw it to, uh, down low, but he could not. Yeah, a lot of young Falcons in the lineup tonight. As we've seen a lot of injuries and uh, the, the flu bug going around the Falcons locker room. I, I think it's been the whole school. Yeah. Uh, basically, and now a shot thrown on was tipped away. Not sure if Smoley uh, got a piece of that. Now Jarl is working his way in. He stops up, and he lost his footing. I, it, it looked like he may have been clipped a bit, but I don't think he was. I think I don't think it was enough to yeah. call a penalty. I think he just tripped yeah, up. No. Now it's brought on in, and Jarl's great physical play there to come back on the play. And, Jarl's and a big a hit there as the hand goes up. Jarvis, you got to be smart. Er, yeah, and, yeah, and, and John Jarvis, you got to be smart out the box. there. Yep. And I know, like, like I, I wasn't sure. I don't think the goalies were either because neither goalie went off until the, the Xavier player touched the puck. So 3.14 to go in the second. As Xavier will get their second power play of the period. They are one for one so far in the game. Jaros, very aggressive player. That one, his frustration just got the best of him. I mean, not, nothing wrong with, I mean, there's something wrong with that, but Given Xavier an advantage, he that he probably gonna get a card with a charging and interference. He's gonna give the ref some business, but it doesn't matter. The call's the call. It's two minutes in the box for John Jaros as he got tripped up. We said it maybe got clipped. He skated from one end to the other and just absolutely buried the Xavier Musketeer in the corner. And the, the penalty killer is out for the Falcons. Schuler, Tiggs, Nelson, and Harchi. Now Harchi. Now shot thrown towards the net. Was blocked off by the shot coming up the stick of Rapini. Now pass across to Schuler almost took the pass away and now he races after it. Now Schuler gets to it. Now behind the net he controls. Still has it and a great job to kill time here by Schuler. He puts it around. Harchi racing in after it. A yeah, great, and a great kill so far here by the Falcons as now Xavier will take it out. Go ahead, sorry. Official call on that John Jaro's penalty is gonna be roughing. It could have been a few things, interference. Uh, roughing or charging, but roughing is the official call. Now in the middle, they were and they tried to control, but they could not. Schuler they got the puck off the off player, but they take it back, and now Xavier will get set up on the power play. Now oh, shot on was blocked off by Schuler as he banks it off the glass and out of the zone. Great clear there by Luke Schuler. As we've seen Schuler take a lot of sp sponges and blocks so far this, these past two days and started this weekend. I mean, last night I called him SpongeBob SquarePants because I was as much sponges he's had. He takes another one right there and wastes some more penalty time. Now takes has it, or, or, or I'm sorry, that, that, uh, Nelson, and he cleared it back down. Great clear by Nelson as no one was even close to that puck. Now Ferry trying to poke at it. He had a shorthanded goal last night, so he, we already know he's very dangerous on the kill. Now the, the Musketeers will skate it out. Minute 45 to go in the second. Now pass in the middle, and the pass once again in the middle, and a great defensive play there by Tiggs to tie up the Xavier player coming in with the puck as he was all alone, but Tiggs was able to use the stick to prevent any shots from getting on net. Now it's in the middle again. With a lot of the players, Nick Tiggs playing. And a pass thrown back towards the player going off before Xavier went wide of him, so a bad break there. As that will, will uh, do it for the power play for Xavier. One second to go, and that is it as Jaros leaves the box. As we said, uh, a lot. Nick Tiggs did play juniors with Adam Birchlaff. Now pass and up many and, of the and Falcons. it all has a lot of room. It all moves in. He shoots. Save made there with the pad by the Xavier goaltender. Frambus now pass across. Now Gray trying to get it over to Ferry, but it bounced over his stick. 50 seconds remaining in the period. Now pass out of the zone and Xavier controls. Now a Papuano takes it back and now it's taken back by Xavier. It could be a two on one. A shot on and it was deflected wide. Now Denol trying to get to and he could not, and the shot on was deflected into the corner by the stick of Trent Gray. Gray controls, banks it off the boards, and just wide up, up Denol, but it won't be icing as, as it went off the stick. 25 seconds to go in the period. And now Denol gets it into the middle. But he had it poked off of him. Naruto has it, and a one-timer, and a save made by the Xavier goaltender. Now in the middle, and Denol scores! Chase Denol, set up by Chase Nitschke. And with 11 seconds to go in the period, BG extends their lead to five to two. That, that connection lines up again, and we said it's the third time in the past two nights. It's happened twice tonight and once last night. Chasing all Chase Nitschke, the, uh, the two chases, absolutely huge 
Five to two, Bowling Green leads with 10 seconds left. And just like last night, just in the second period, Bowling Green did not quit right before that horn, and they score. And now Horvath will take the will take the draw. And now the officials are talking. I believe, I mean, if I want to take a guess, if I want to take a crack at this, they might be talking about the net coming off, possibly because the net came off. Yeah, the, the ref right talk at, about right as the puck went in, and now uh, the official giving an, giving an explanation to the Xavier coach, and he'll give him the explanation definitely to Drew Harper to see what's happening here. But the faceoff is at center ice. I'm assuming it's a good goal. We will see though. The Jeopardy sound plays absolutely beautiful. Ox work. And, and they're still talking with each other. And we're waiting for this intermission report. 11 seconds left in the period. Still a lot of hockey to play. And we've seen Bowling Green score twice last night with not many, not much time left. So this one's definitely not over. You got to play the whistle here, Justin. So we got our producer Chip dancing, just coming now, straight out of McDonald's. Now Horvath on the draw. That's one back by Xavier. Secured off the glass and it goes all, all the way back down. Will this stop play before the period ends? It will. 1.6 seconds to go in the second. And according to our PA system, it is a good goal. It's going to be it's still 5 to 2 Falcons. I mean, we would have heard something that definitely, Justin, if uh, they called that goal off. And probably some, some boo birds coming out in the Slater Family Ice Arena. Or about the, on the draw to end the period. Going back over at the boards, and that will do it for the second period. Four goals in the second period for the Falcons. They outscore the Xavier Musketeers 4-1 in the period. An outstanding second period for the clubbers of uh, BG, and we will hop right into the intermission report. Yep. So uh, what were your thoughts on that second period, and, and how were they able to adapt to Xavier's play in the second period after the first period? Yeah, Xavier, a very tough team, very aggressive in that first period, and we saw that as a 1-1 tie, obviously going into the second. Morgan seemed to adapt, waited, made plays. I mean, the the, uh, the Denal, Chase Denal and Chase Nitschke, so far the highlights of tonight's game, mm -hmm. as we've seen a goal and assist each for them with each other back back and forth. Um, yeah, I mean, we've seen Chase and all do that a lot. He hang, he lurks by that blue line when Bowling Green does the defense, and as soon as that puck comes down, Chase and all is alone with one man to beat. And, you know, we've, we've said it a lot. It didn't happen that time, but Chase and all versus one man is very dangerous for the defensive team. That, that shot was saved by, so far, the amazing goalie performance by the Xavier netminder. Mm -hmm. I will say tip, hat tip to him. Five to two right now, gave up five goals, but he has faced a lot of shots. Um, yeah, I mean, Bowling Green did good keys to the game, except stay out of the penalty box and, so and far. There's, there's yeah, been some I was going to say, I know, I know, we, I know we, we, we've already said this. It's the same lead they had last night, 5-2. They were up 5-2 last night, and I think the only key I can think of right now, and I cannot emphasize this enough, do not take penalties because Xavier, they already scored one power play goal. You don't need them to score and get back in this game. You're going to stay out of the box in the third. Yeah, I think if Bowling Green could score the next one, it'll be huge for momentum, and hopefully they could take us home into, you know, I'll knock on wood, two wins going into game three tomorrow. Yep. And uh, that is just about it for the second intermission, Dirty, Bo uh, Dirty Birds report. The Dirty Birds second intermission report. I mixed up the phrases, pardon me, and we will be back shortly for the third period, so don't go anywhere.
And welcome back, everybody. Thank you for staying tuned. We are just about set to get the third period underway between Xavier and BG. The Falcons scored four goals in the second, outscoring Xavier 4-1 to in the second period to take a 5-2 lead into the third. And that's where we stand now as a shot thrown on towards the net. It's handled there by Framis as he covers up. Yeah, big, big save by Framis right there. He's had a great night, but man, did that take a weird bounce. Luckily for Xavier, they aren't down 6-2. 1951 left as that just ran nine seconds off the clock. And the no on the draw. Xavier wins it back. And it came near Gray. He kept it in for a second, but now it's taken out. Going all the way back in. Denal racing in after it. Denal stops it up. Tried to toe drag. He had it poked off of him as he was pursu uh, pursued by a couple different Xavier players. Excuse me. Now Zeebel is trying to battle for it there. And he's back behind the net where Gray has it. Gray over to Papuanu. Papuanu and, and now Denal. Denal back ends one towards Ferry. Rudo, Horvath, and Nitschke. Music. Come on. And Xavier controls. Horvath is trying to get to it there. And a shot by Nitschke who whistled high and wide as the net is off now. <laughs> the ref will move that back and we won't. Tough break for, tough beat for the people who have the over right now. Is Great awareness there. Now a shot save made by Smalley. And it's loose in the crease. He comes out. Harchi gets to it. Long pass out. And he tried to hit Horvath on a, on a breakaway, but he could not as it was poked away off of him. Yeah, I I think Bowling Green's going to come out a lot more aggressive this period, to be honest, Justin. We talked to a few guys in the locker room. Yeah, they're up 5-2. Tiebreaker when it comes to the TSHL playoffs is we will have. Now Nelson has it. Nelson in the middle, and he had it poked off him. I'll go ahead, sorry. First is points, second is head-to-head, -head, and then third is your goal differential in the conference. I mean, in these games, a blowout is, is way more huge than a close two-to-one game, but obviously the the goals, or not the goals, but the uh, the win comes first. And icing is called. 17-50 left to go in the third. Still 5-2, BG leads Xavier. Icing's called, but the refs are gonna let Xavier make a line change. Kind of a weird moment there. Yeah, maybe it wasn't icing. I don't know. <laughs> um, again, like can call is what we yeah, see, yeah, but I'm not we don't we don't know what the refs thinking. Schuler will take the draw. His family's in the crowd, as we mentioned earlier. And this one back by Xavier, and it's cleared up into the mesh, and the faceoff will remain in the zone. And that puck will, as there's a little kid and a man both chasing for this puck right now. We'll see what happens if the man decides to let up and give the little kid the puck as that puck will go to Souvenir and will be remembered forever. Unless he throws it over the boards. I don't know how ACHA <laughs> works. <laughs> Hopefully a future clubber on our hands gets that puck right there. Schuler on the draw, forwards with him are Nelson and Wood, and defenseman is Dirk Mott and Carter Klein. There's up one back over to Klein. Klein and now Wood, he had to go off his skate and, and he's able to get it back. He tried to throw it down low, but it was blocked off. And a shot by Klein whistled over the net. Backhand yep. and deep by Dirk Mike. Go ahead. A lot of blue line shots so far tonight. Now a drive by Nelson and the glove save made there by Framis as he holds it. 17 30. Man, to go. Framis playing a good game. Mm -hmm. Both, Both goalies. goalies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. You owe me a coach. You, you wanna, <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> Jinx. You didn't say Jinx. <laughs> you're, tr you're trying to copy me over here. <laughs> you know, we've worked way too much together, is all that means, Justin. Yeah. I think we're a step ahead. Over the Jumbotron people, it says second period. It's the third period, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, I think I've seen her two horns. So no. <laughs> it's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> now, Klein a shot, and he was looking for a tip there, and, and it went wide. Now, Dirk Mott down low and off the stick of Shooty. Now, Dubendorfer trying to get to it. Now, Odell, he had it poked off of him. Kept in the zone for a moment there by Klein, but it was taken out. Now, overskated there by the Xavier player. Now, Dubendorfer has it. He already has a goal in the game, and he was pickpocketed there. Now, it's banked off the boards and out. Klein trying to get to it. It was poked off of him back all the way down in the far corner. Now, Dirk Mott banks it off the boards. Knocked down there by the Xavier forward. Shot thrown towards the net, and the tip went wide. That Bowling Green closed right in front of Jack Smalling to make sure that puck never even saw the net. And now, Dirk Mott. He got tangled up there as he went down. Pass by 
Odell went wide of Dubendorfer. I will say though, great effort by Dirkmont right there to, uh, you know, fall and still still get that puck out of the zone. I mean, it's the most important part. Now thrown down the ice. Now Zebel. Back pass over to Gray. Gray and now Barry has it. Barry across over to Zebel. Zebel. Pass over to Ferry, it was knocked down with the glove, and now pass up for a two on one, but it went wide to the Xavier player, goes all the way back down, and icing is called, and the coaches on the Xavier bench not happy with that call. 16 yeah, minutes to go in the third. Not Sorry. happy at all for the Xavier coaches right there. And the officials having a talk at the BG blue line. Yeah, but if you're the officials, you gotta, you gotta stay with your call. And, and they agree that the faceoff will be all the way down in the Xavier defensive zone, BG offensive zone. So a good break there for the Falcons. As I'm not sure, I believe that went off of something. But we'll play on. Zeno on the draw. This one back over to Ferry. Ferry back pass, went wide of Gray as he goes all the way back down. 15.53 left. Oh, was it? Miscommunication right there between Zebel and his defensive partner Trey, or Trent Gray rather. Mm -hmm. And now Zebel to his Z partner Trent Gray as they get set up. And now Zebel pass off the glass, and hops back it into the zone, and now Denol has it. Denol works his way up the ice, and a puff one who got taken down there at the line, and I believe they're going to call off sides. Yeah, tough break for the Falcons there is, I mean, obviously Mikey Pap Papuano did not want to get, you know, not wanted to get over the blue line, kind of got pushed over there. Offside is the call. That's like an NHL thing, like like in the video game, you, you like pushing people over the line to, to cause offsides. It's like a video game. I've never seen that before in real life. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you kind of see something new every time you tune into this and every time we call a game. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm looking up at that light that was broken a couple – uh, weeks ago, that light is still broken. Yeah, last home game, actually. Mm -hmm. That light's still broken. It looks a bit better than it used to. I guess maybe a couple fragments fell off. There were a couple little pieces dangling off of it, but yeah, now it's totally uh, gone. As now it's played in the far corner by Zebel. But yeah, I think that's one thing. I mean, I, I have no idea what could happen, but I doubt I'll ever see something like that again. Yeah. Now Ferry trying to get to it. He will take it into the zone. And now it's his poke check, but now Zebel has it. Zebel moves in. He shoots, and he whistles one just wide. And now Denal. No, great move there. But works his way on in, and a save made there by Frambus. And he's definitely the highlight of the Xavier team, so at least tonight, if not the whole season, from what we've heard. And a shot there was deflected up and over the net. And, yeah, he's been outstanding. I know, like, he's, he's uh, given up uh, five goals so far. But, I mean, He's had a, a great game, really. He's had a, a lot of great saves. Yeah, and it's a good Bowling Green team. I mean, we've talked about it. They're kind of hopefully towards the end of the rebuild. Very young team as the future is very bright for the Falcons. You know, five goals against a team like this, you'd love yeah. to see it. And Horvath couldn't handle the pass as he was looking for his second goal of the night. Now back over to Gray. Gray shoots. And that's off. And it, but I believe that went off the, the inside of the mask. And now they're going to call it. That went off the mask of the goaltender, I believe, or off of his shoulder. It went off, it, it caught him up high, though, as he takes off his mask. Yep, it went off his mask. He looks to be okay. And a hell of a shot there by uh, Trent Gray. 13.54 to go in the third. And for the Bowling Green men's soccer fans out there, men's soccer wins the senior night against Chicago State 3 to nil. Athletics going on tonight besides this ACHA matchup. Now Nitschke, pass down low, and uh, not the goaltender Framis on the uh, pass attempt. Now Rudo has it. Rudo pass over to Nitschke. And Nitschke works his way on in. Spins back corner. Looking for his third point tonight, Chase Nitschke. Goal and assist. He threw it on that, and it was it deflected right into the catching glove of Framis as he will hold on, <coughs> hold on to it. Excuse me, 13-32 to go in the second now. BG still leads 5-2. Yeah, and as, Bowling, or as he said, Bowling Green for J Jack Smalley, talking about the other goalie behind there, because we haven't really talked about it tonight. It is huge to see Bowling Green's future having three goalies this season, all young, both two sophomores and a freshman. Yep. Now, yeah. shot on, save made there by Frambus 
off the shot from Wood. Go ahead. And the best problem is having too much talent yep. in all sports, no matter hockey or what. That's a problem that, be, that this team is faced with, I think. They have Al, um, Al Lapata and then Brown, two very, very talented goaltenders. And then Smalley, he's proven that he can play as well. And I'm sure once we see Sudlow play, he won't disappoint either. No, Sudlow making his first. He's making his roster debut. He probably won't see net time tonight, but he is a hard practice player who's finally rostered right now. You'd love to see that, you know, great feel-good story for uh, Sudlow. Yeah, the Musketeers try and work it out, but Wood stole it. And then and it went off his stick. Now it's loose. Comes out over to Climb. And they're all chopping at it now. Nelson, great move. A put it in front, and they score. Luke Schuler, 6-2. BG leads, and that extends their lead to four. And I know you love that goal there. Yeah, ben. I mean, that's my roommate right there, Luke Schuler. You love to see it as he finally ends that scoring point drought that he's had for the past five, five games. He finds the back of the net, makes it 6-2. to two. And a great pass in the middle there. And the Schuler with the great finish as, as he put it glove side. Fourth line out there now for BG, Jaros, Dubendorfer, and Odell. And I know that, I mean, I know that Luke Schuler goal is going to feel special for him. We've, we've talked a lot. Um, obviously, being my roommate, he abs he's kind of been frustrated with himself. And his, I mean, he led the team in points this year a lot. Kind of felt like he had a lot of pressure on him. That pressure's off finally five goal, five games, and now he has his, he nets his first one since the Dayton series. And I mean, I would I would understand why because to lead the team in points as a freshman that's huge, and you're going to have high expectations for yourself and your team. It's also going to have very high expectations for you going into your next season. And he's been playing great uh, this year, and to see him get on the board here in this game is phenomenal to see. I love yeah. it. Yeah, he's a very aggressive player this year, kind of way more aggressive and more uh, yeah than last year. You know, finally netting one there. And like I told him when we talked about it, you know, there's a lot more talent on this team, nothing against last year's team, but a lot of talent that came in the offseason, so maybe not all that pressure's on him. And also, one thing that I keep on talking about, as Jarl shoots, and uh, 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 wide, excuse me, one thing that I always refer back to is that last year, I mean, half the team was out. Half yeah. the team was on the IR last year. It was very, very uh, rough to see. And now I think this year, uh, uh, we've seen very few injuries so far. And now a breakaway chance for Xavier. Smalley way out. And he makes a great save with the glove. And that makes the ball defense jump. Every single player got up and clapped those boards and went crazy. He went spread eagle and flashed the leather. You and love to see that. Save. And he's so patient, comes out wide and just skates back and kind of puts a head game on the, the, break, the breaking uh, musketeer there. Huge save, and that one will be remembered for at least tonight, if not a while. That was Matt Mahan on the breakaway there. and He made a great move there, but a better save. And now a two-on-one chance, Papuano and Ferry. Ferry has the puck. They tried to get it across, but it was blocked. He puts it in the middle, and it's loose in the crease, and Papuano's tipping chance was stopped by Frambis. Great save there. And I mean, both goalies coming up uh, a big tonight. And we've seen Smalley make two. He's one in the first and one just a few moments ago, and, and we've seen Framus make a ton of excellent saves in this game throughout the entire game. And like I said, I mean, that's <laughs> can you really complain if that's your technically third string goalie? No. I mean, all all three of the goalies, and I mean, we haven't seen Sudlow play, so I mean, he's a great player as well, but the three goalies we've seen so far this season and the people that are wondering uh, why Lapata and Brown are out tonight, they're both just kind of banged up. Just give them some rest, give a weekend off. It's been a long, tough schedule. Pata and Brown and two sophomores, some time to breathe and relax. And so far in these two games, and we got one more tomorrow that Brownie will probably see net time in, if not Sudlow, you know, see how they do. 10.42 to go in the third now. BG leads 6-2 over Xavier. Horvath on the draw, and it's back by Xavier, and the clearing attempt was stopped off by Pigs. Pigs now Rudo. Rudo was checked off the puck. And the clearing attempt once again kept in by Tiggs. Now Horvath is trying to get to it. Rudo as well. So it was poked off both of them. Now brought in by the Musketeers. Oh, and, and a late hit there. Late hit there as that was just um, after the whistle. And we kind of see the see that a lot in these games, Justin, is if 
either team, once these once this scoreboard kind of gets expanded and it's a big lead for a team, we see a lot more hitting, a lot more aggressiveness, kind of frustrations getting the best of the team that's down. We've seen that from Bowling Green. We've seen I'm, that from other opponents. I'm we not sure exactly what the call was there. I mean, there's no penalty. Like once again, it was the same thing that we saw back in the second. I I'm not sure. Was it icing? I yeah. I mean, I I, I assume so. Like we said previously, we really don't know. I thought the, I thought uh, it was icing. I thought the forward had takes beat there. Either way, Bowling Green gets a face off in the offensive zone. Now Nitschke back over to Harchie. Harchie shot on. Loose in the slot. Or bad tried to get a shot off, but he could not as he was tied up there. And Nitschke throws it down low. Comes around. A pigs throws it around. On the net, throwing back around again. Kept in now by Tiggs. And then the clearing attempt was stopped up. Throwing across the crease wide, and Archie keeps it in. Archie down low and chopped out there by Tiggs as he whiffed on it. And now it's brought out by Xavier. And throwing back in as they were going to make a change. Nine and a half minutes to go in regulation. BG with a 6 2 lead over Xavier. Now Horvath moves in. Horvath dumps it in towards the net. It's over up there by Frambus, and he will hold it. 9 26 left to go now on the clock. 6 to 2, 9 26 left in the clock. As Justin just said, Bowling Green still looking to score, trying to, you know, get some more momentum going into tomorrow's game. Tomorrow we will be at Xavier taking the, the old cars down and the, the vans. Yep. So stay tuned for that tomorrow and check the. Stay tuned for that. And now pass out. Went wide of a couple players. Klein watches the forward there. Now Schuler takes it out and gets it over to Wood. Wood with speed. Now in the middle, it's poked out there by Wood. And now Nelson tried to put it in front, but he fanned on it. Now Nelson watching the Xavier D man there. Hit there by Schuler as he got it out. And yeah, Nelson kind of got screened there by the ref. Ref just trying to get out of the way, and I'm just running to Nelson. And the Musketeers try and work it. In the offensive zone. Back at the point. No shot there. Right now pass across. And a shot on was blocked off by Klein. And that's blocked there by Carter Klein. That's a huge block by the freshman Carter. Now in the middle of the shot when it went wide. It's a huge block right there by the freshman Carter Klein. You know, as small he was screen, I don't think he saw the puck at all. Now pass in the middle and it went through the crease. And a big hit there on Klein. Xavier was doing a great job of maintaining control. And now three on two chance for the Falcons. It could be. Shooter throws it in. It's gloved. And that will stop play with 8.09 left to go in the third. Yeah, it seemed like the Falcons were in the middle of a shift or uh, line change and a three on two. So Shuler just shoots it straight at the Musketeer tender. And we will have a face off once again in the offensive zone for the Falcons as Bubendorf will take the draw for the Falcons. Miss off one back by BG. Zebel has it. Now Shooty throws it towards the net. It was blocked off. And now taken out by Xavier. That's a cross now starting. A big hit there by the boards by Dubendorfer. And man, he's been everywhere tonight. Mm -hmm. Fourth line gritty guy. Now and he's going to try out. to skate down this for icing, but it's going to go straight mm -hmm. to the Musketeer tender. And that's stopped play with 7.46 left to go. Yeah. Dubendorfer having a game to remember tonight. And that's his first of the season. Just a guy that, you know, kind of like a Cole Ferry. Um, smaller guy, if you look at him, he probably, you probably don't think he's a great hockey player. But, you know, we got a lot of small, elusive guys. And when they get the puck, they're fast. A lot of the smaller guys on this team are some of the more physical ones on this team. And we've seen that a lot here this season. Now Jaros has it. Works his way out and a great move there. And then he was pickpocketed. And now Zebel has it. Zebel, great skating. He works his way out, moves on in. He got tripped up and a backhander save made by Frambus. And on the trip, that will be a penalty. And BG will head to the power play. I thought that for a second, as he shot the puck and he got tripped up, that we'd see a penalty shot. We've seen a great penalty shot last year at home against Wisconsin. Cole, we'll bring up Cole Ferry's name again because, man, is he elusive. Um, he had a Great penalty shot and ended up top eight in all of score or top eight goals in the uh, ACHA tournament. Mm -hmm. 
I know the boys are hyped about that. And Rob Rosina will head to the box for Xavier. Horvath, Ajaros, Nelson, Tiggs, and Rudo. Power play unit. Pass over to Rudo as they get set up. Now Tiggs, one timer there and one just wide. Nelson controls. Back to Rudo. Rudo has it at the point, and now Tiggs. Tiggs back to Rudo. Rudo, Horvath now. Horvath in the middle. Nelson put in quick control, but he gets to it now. And now Rudo controls over at the point. Takes a slap shot. Now a long pass across on the slap pass by Tiggs over to Horvath. And now swoops behind the net. He comes out over to Tiggs. Tiggs. And his pass for Rudo was blocked off, but he gets it back. And then he gets it back to Rudo. Oh, and it was poked off. Poked away. Now Rudo will take it back in, in uh, neutral ice as they have to regroup. And now Rudo takes it in. And he was poked check, and now it's cleared back down. Smalley plays it. As now both teams make changes. And now Tiggs waits with it as the Falcons finish off the change. Now Ferry stops up. Pass across. Papalano moves in. He shoots, and it was. Uh, it deflected into the corner. Pass across over to Ferry. Ferry moves on in. Now Dubendorfer on in. Great move and a save made there by Frambis. And power play is over. Great power play for Bowling Green as they didn't net one, but man, did they put a lot on Frambis. Now it's cleared out. And thrown right back in by Zebel. Now Xavier looks to get set up. Back in their own zone. 4.50 left to go in the third. 6-2, Bowling Green maintains their lead. Stubby tried to poke at that and just didn't, couldn't find the puck. Now in the middle. Now it's poked away and Dumendorfer has it over to Denal. And Denal moves on in with speed. Stops up there. Waits with it. Now he's poke checked. Now Gray will take over by the red line. And now Shooty off of Dumendorfer and M. Denal very an offensive first player. We've seen him lurk around the blue line a lot, and that's made a lot of change so far this season. 4-11 left in the third period. Now Xavier gets set up in their own zone. Now it's thrown out, and the long pass up was hopped off by Dumendorfer. Now, now the Musketeers will take it back. The forward spins. Pass across out at the point. Shot on, save made by Smalley. Yeah, Smalley giving up a big rebound there. Luckily, the Bowling Green was there to get it out of the zone. And it was shipped out of the zone. Because I don't think Smalley meant to give a rebound off the chest. A pass went wide of the Xavier forward. Now it's backhanded in by Shooty. Now Schuler waits with it. And they got to take him down there. Now the Musketeers to take it back, and now Nelson has it. Nelson with poke check. Threw it towards the net just wide. Now towards the net, and it went off to the outside of the net. And a flip pass in front, it's loose. Now cleared out of there. And Schuler got uh, tripped up, and now Wood takes over. Wood put it in front, and it went wide. I believe that was Wood that had that flip pass behind the net. That was a very smart play. Didn't go the Falcons' way, but man, that was smart. Now Schuler flips it back in. Line change here, Horvath line will come out. Horvath racing after it, pass across. The one timer there, just sailed up over the net. Now Horvath in front as he was poke checked as he, as he just lost control at the last second. A big hit there oh. on, on the boards by Wood and that will send Wood off to the box for interference. Yeah, I mean, it, that's an interference call. Tight call, could have gone either way, but that one's going to go against Jeffrey Wood. We'll see the Musketeers power play come back on the ice right now as they're one for three, I believe. Yeah, one for three on power plays tonight. Bowling Green's going to have to kill this one with 2.24 left. We won't see a full-strength Falcons team until about the end of this one, 24 seconds left, unless we see a Musketeer goal. Six to two. 224 left. Bowling Green's on the power play for two minutes. Or Bowling Green's on the penalty kill for two minutes. 
as they will send their second guys out there, Horvath, Nitschke, Harchi, and Tiggs, as the Musketeers have the puck, and they're going to skate it into the their offensive zone. Now Xavier controls. Back to the point. Pass across down low in the corner. Pass across at the point, and a one-timer save made, and it's loose, and Small is able to catch it out of the air. 2.06 to go in the third down, a minute 42 left to go on the power play. Well, we're doing a great job as they do always besides um, to keep that penalty, or keep that power play as a one-on-one -on -one instead of a five-on-four as they isolate one player at a time. Now pass across, on the way, and it could be a two-on-oh, Horvath with Nitschke. Pass across, and Nitschke just put it wide, and the rebound is put in. And that's Cam Horvath's second goal tonight. A shorthanded goal. Cam Horvath, and that makes it 7-2 Bowling Green. With 1.56 left to go here in the third. Beautiful play by Nitschke and Horvath, and great awareness by Horvath there, Justin, is the musketeer tender fell out of the net and couldn't get back up. Wide open net. No mm. one saw the puck because Nitschke missed the net. And he comes back and gets a nice wraparound for his second goal tonight. And all that hard work that Horvath's been doing all season has paid off. And we will still have five on four hockey. Now face off is one back over to Nelson. And now Harchie will have it to kill time. And he banks it off the boards over to Rudo. And Rudo has it in neutral ice. And now it's taken back by the Falcons. It's thrown all the way back down. And yeah, you said great heads up play. I mean, Horvath initiated the uh, pressure, and it was a forced pass down uh, down by the blue line from point to point. And Nitschke saw it, and he raced after it, poked it out, and they were off to the races. Yeah. I mean, you love to see that Chase Nitschke having a game, man. Oh, yeah. And a shot in the glove save made by Smalley. I mean, it's seven goals, but three of those goals had, I believe, Chase Nitschke involved. That's two assists for Nitschke and one goal, three points tonight. No. That, that'd be, yeah, two assists for Nitschke and one goal for Nitschke. The face off will be at the far side in the BG defensive zone. And Bowling Green trying to kill off the clock and still get some points as Nelson will head up the ice. And Nelson has it. And he held on and did no penalty called. Bowling Green not mad about that because game seven to two, Frank with a minute left. And now Rudo is able to get it out all the way back down. One minute to go in the game now. Bowling Green will have a full strength of 24 seconds, but at this one, it's just kind of going to wait till that buzzer hit zero, and Bowling Green will be celebrating 2-0 and on the weekend. And now Gray flips it out. 20 seconds to go on the power play, 40 seconds to go in the game. Xavier trying to get it out. And I mean, I think this is what me and you expected here tonight. You know, this is a good Xavier team that BG went up against here tonight, and they dominated the last 40 minutes, the second and third period here in tonight's game. Yeah, something we saw both nights. It seemed like Bowling Green in the first period, not, I wouldn't say like timid, but they did come out and, you know, hold back the punches until they realized what team they were playing. We saw both nights. And last night, I mean, it was a it was a 10-round boxing war. And this tonight, it's... After that first round, it would has been just absolutely beaten up. And that is two straight wins for the Falcons as they win this game seven to two, and they take the first two games of their three-game weekend series. And two's a streak, Justin. Three's a winning streak. We love to see that as the handshakes will go. We will go straight into our Dirty Birds post-game show as we don't have interviews tonight. Mm -hmm. And their record now back up to 500. They are now 5-5 are now five and five on the season. And they look to go They look to go over 500 tomorrow. A big weekend for the Falcons so far and hopefully you guys can stay tuned tomorrow. Same spot an hour later, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for everybody around the world lit watching. It should be around 9.15. I know that's what it says on, on the schedule, 9.15 and we will have that for you, just pay attention to the Twitter updates. We will have that for you posted on the Twitter account whenever the stream starts. And a big win here for, uh, for the Falcons. And uh, tonight, um, another dominating offensive performance. But I think what we saw that was different here tonight was that 
everybody was contributing. It, 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 it was a great overall effort. Last night, we saw the first line like take over the game on offense. And tonight, we saw two goals from the fourth line, Dubendorfer and Schutte getting on the board. And we saw a couple goals from the second line. Uh, Horvath scored two. And I mean, it was all around a great performance. Smalley, once again, phenomenal in that. And I mean, like, and you can't say enough about this BG team and what they've done so far this year. No, it makes, it makes you smile if you're a Bowling Green Falcon fan of the ACHA. Variety, 7-2, to two, but six of those goals came from six separate Falcons, as Justin just mentioned. Huge night for Bowling Green. That one's to smile about, but just like that, not much time to celebrate. You got a game tomorrow back at Xavier as Coach Duff, the goalie coach for the Falcons, does a little dance leaving uh, the ice, heading to the locker room. And, um, I mean... Yeah, I mean, we know Xavier, they're going to want to get back at them uh, tomorrow night. Um, both teams, uh, now that they've played a game against each other, they know how they kind of, like, a play now. So it was, um, I think both teams will do very well adapting to each other for the game uh, tomorrow night. And I'm excited for the game tomorrow night as well for, uh, for the Falcons' chance to get back up over 500. Yeah, and we haven't seen them 500 since... The Dayton series, I mean, uh, obviously a tough four-game stretch after that, but this is how you bounce back of a four-game losing streak. Yep. Bowling Green will go to nine points on the, the, TS, the TSHL rankings, nine points, and still first in the north, I believe, as I look at the standings. I mean, obviously a few more TCHL games going on right now. We will get you that update tomorrow and where the standings lie, but Bowling Green still ahead with their own destiny in the north as they have nine points on the evening. And uh, you love to see that first game's obviously so important in this conference. You take three points, a regulation win, seven to two, five, add plus five to your goal differential. And I mean, like. But it tomorrow's still important. It was what, I, I think it, it was what me and you expected. They scored a lot of goals and Smalley was great. And then that it was your ideal performance from them. They got shorthanded goals again another shorthanded goal they had one last night and one tonight their penalty kill has been outstanding i know they let it they uh, let in a goal tonight but i mean you can't say enough about what this team is doing uh this year and down the stretch it's going to be a very very testy season but i mean i think we're just getting started here for what we're going to be seeing all year here uh, from this falcon team yeah you absolutely love to see that you know and as we wrap up this dirty birds post game show Definitely player of the game, Chase Nitschke. I, I would say so. A goal and two assists. I mean, that, that Chase Nitschke, Chase and all pairing, that it's not even on the same line, have, have struck a lot in the past two games, and we should see that a lot as, you know, guys are coming off, you can still score in the middle of a change, and we've seen a couple times. Um, for I'm Ben Shannon, for my partner, Justin Chicatano, for, my produce, for our producer, Chip and for head coach Drew Harper, team president Adam Bertzloff. We thank you for tuning in to another ACHA Division II matchup. Bowling Green wins this one 7-2 to in regulation, and we will see you tomorrow. Stay updated on our Twitter, at Bowling Green Club Hockey, for updates on when that stream will be. Thank you. And have a good night, everybody.